Hello, I'm George Donov, a senior here at HPA, and today I'm going to tell you a story about Alice, Bob, and bananas. Alice and Bob are sitting at a lunch table. Alice has one banana, and she wants to give it to Bob. So, Alice gives Bob the banana. She places it in his hand and gives it to him. Alice now has zero bananas, and Bob has one. We saw what happened. It was a physical transaction. Alice and Bob really didn't need a friend or a witness to prove that the transaction happened. They both knew the transaction occurred, so their friend could be chatting away happily with someone else. The transaction just occurred is what we know to be a very standard transaction for centuries, a personal barter. Someone gives something to another person and they are both happy. Alice can't give more bananas than she has because there are no more in her possession. Bob can't receive more than one banana because Alice has no more to give. Bob can even give his banana to someone else if he chooses to do so. But in this case, no matter what happens, there is only one banana. And in our world, Alice and Bob would use the dollar to make the physical transaction. So if Alice wanted to give Bob a dollar, she would use something that has a trustable ledger. A ledger is a large collection of data in which transactions and balances of dollars, or perhaps bananas, are recorded for both Alice and Bob. This transaction would be recorded in a ledger that some institution controls. In this way, if Alice and Bob trust whomever controls the institution, they know their transactions will be verifiable. Even if Alice isn't at the lunch table and doesn't know Bob, she will be certain that the transaction will be recorded in the ledger. And so, Alice will no longer have the dollar, and now Bob will. What if the dollar, or should I say banana, was virtual. So Alice wants to give Bob a virtual banana. So Alice sends Bob her virtual banana. <laughs> well, OK, Alice, how did you send it? If Alice sends this virtual banana through an email to Bob, then how does Bob know that he received an exact banana and not just a copy? Bob can't confirm that Alice has discarded her virtual copy of the banana. So Bob isn't sure if the banana has, he has received is actually worth anything. What if Bob tries to send that virtual banana to his friends? Would they trust Bob, ensured that Alice discarded her copy and that Bob would also discard his? Or perhaps Alice downloaded that virtual banana from the same place that 100 people got that exact same copy of it. Then what, does the vir then what value does the virtual banana even have? Wow, well, this just got very complex. <laughs> Looks like a virtual transaction is nothing like a physical transaction. The problem that Alice encountered is called the double spending problem. A bunch of very, very smart folks, ranging from economists to computer scientists, have been trying to solve the double spending problem for centuries. How can Alice and Bob both ensure that one virtual banana is not sent twice or many times? How can the data of the virtual banana be removed from Alice in a way that Bob knows is trustable? Well, let's see if we can figure it out. <laughs> if Alice and Bob use some sort of digital ledger, much like a physical one, well, then haven't we solved the problem? Now, Alice and Bob can transact bananas virtually as much as they like. Whoever controls the ledger would be in full control and of also everyone using it. Or also any transactions coming in and out of the ledger would also have to trust the controller. Well, that's just great. There are some problems with this solution. What if the controller of that ledger just made more bananas? Or perhaps gave bananas to someone without a proof of transaction? That doesn't sound like someone that Alice or Bob would trust in the first place. Just knowing that the person controlling the ledger would be able to do that to the data. 
What if the person controlling the ledger no longer wants to control it or just simply goes out of business? And poor Alice, this entire process is so complicated. What if Alice just wants to give Bob a virtual banana the normal way? Can Alice and Bob replicate the lunch table transaction in the same way virtually? Okay, well, here's an idea. What if we gave this ledger to both Alice and Bob? What if we gave this ledger to everyone? What if everyone had a virtual copy of this ledger on their computer and they all kept track of all the transactions? This ledger would have to contain all transactions of bananas that have ever occurred. Alice or Bob or any other person wouldn't be able to cheat the ledger since it wouldn't agree with everyone else in the system. And this ledger wouldn't, would be very difficult to destroy, especially if it became huge with many people using it. If this ledger system had a defined set of rules from the beginning, everyone transacting within the ledger can know how virtual bananas are transacted. If everyone within the ledger agrees to these set of rules, then everyone has trust of all transactions of all virtual bananas. And so, there is not one person that has full control over this virtual ledger. Alice, Bob, and all other people use consensus through algorithms to confirm that transactions are legitimate. This ledger is decentralized. You too could transact virtual bananas with Alice and Bob in the ledger network and make sure that yours and everyone else's transactions are legitimate. What if... Wait a second, haven't we solved the problem? And oh, that solution exists right now. It's called the Bitcoin protocol. There is no double spending in the Bitcoin ledger. There, there is no one person that has complete control. Everyone knows the rules of the ledgers and transactions are completely transparent. Alice and Bob have addresses in this ledger, much like an ID number, except no one in the ledger knows what address belongs to Alice or Bob, unless Alice and or Bob give that information to whoever they're transacting with. This provides a layer of anonymity for Alice and Bob towards everyone in the system that has not transacted with them, but still holds transactions as identifiable and legitimate. Wow, that's quite the concept. <laughs> a virtual object now does actually behave like a physical one. But how is a virtual ledger even useful? Well, because it's virtual. Just like an email, it can be sent almost instantly from anywhere by anyone. Alice can be in China and transact with Bob in the United States. Using a common rule set ensures that there is one value to all of these virtual objects. And because every, everyone agrees to that value when using the system, it is in their best interest to pitch in and set their computer to help, tran to help confirm transactions. So the network can grow while still being as trustable as before. The more confirmations per transaction, the more trust, the better. Because this network is virtual, Alice can put something else than a banana as a transaction. She could transact many different types of objects, like apples or oranges, or perhaps stocks, contracts, or a confirmation certificate. If everyone agrees on these relationships of how all these objects are presented within the network, then anything can be represented as a transaction. Okay, fantastic. There's a functional and active solution to the double spending problem. The solution is indeed so fantastic that it allows people from all over the world, all over the world to have any transactions with anyone using a fully common denomination of value, a Bitcoin. There is no more currency value disparity. Bitcoin is fundamentally a way of transacting data, all within a virtual ledger, working through a consensus network. And now, you know more about Bitcoin than most. Thank you.